Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be diving into the new palette from By Terry. She launched a new limited edition palette for the fall. Her palettes are all called the Terribly Paris and they're all Paris themed. This is absolutely beautiful. This one is called Bonjour Paris. Paris. I don't know you guys. I don't know how to pronounce all these fancy words, but it says Bonjour Paris. Okay, that's what it looks like. But I'm sure there's a much fancier way of saying it. This is obviously in the VIP expert line. This retails for $56. I went ahead and picked it up on the Beautylish website. I do think it's available at other retailers. Any of those retailers that I find, I will list it in the description box down below in case you guys are interested. But this has nine shades, which a lot of her palettes have 10 shades, but this one has nine. Lots to say about this palette. I was excited because I just love these tones and I love bronzy tones. So this was kind of up my alley, right? This was my first By Terry palette. This one is the Paris Mon Amour and I, or Paris Mon Amour, I don't know. I'm not sure, I probably said that wrong. Paris Mon Amour palette. Now this was a 10 pen palette and it came with a little brush. This was my first experience with By Terry and her eyeshadows. So when I saw this one pop up, I just, I wanted it, I had to have it. Right off the bat, you will notice that there are some similar shades in this palette versus this palette. This is the number three, this is the number four. Right here in the middle, this shade in the middle, is the same as this shade right here in this palette. So there are some similarities. Uh, and of course, I will swatch this palette next to this palette in case you have this palette. You may not need this palette. This palette, I felt like my only complaint with this palette was this shade right here and this shade right here were too similar to be in this palette. Even though this has 10 shades and the new one only has nine, these two shades right here were too similar and I felt like they were not necessary in this palette. There are two matte shadows, but they're both really light and they both kind of have the same color. Like I just didn't understand the need for those two shades. Oh, That's the deets on this, you guys. Let's go ahead and jump into the three eyeshadow looks that I created using this palette. And then we will jump into the swatches and I will swatch this palette and also compare it to other palettes that might be similar. And of course I will compare this palette next to it. And then of course we will jump into my final thoughts. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the three eyeshadow looks and I will see you all in my final thoughts. So I'm gonna first start with this shade right here in the center. And I'm gonna be using the BK Beauty A504 from the Angie from Hot and Flashy collaboration. And I'm gonna place this in the crease and just see what kind of color we get, what kind of dimension. Because this is the only true matte shadow in the palette, I wanna kind of play around with it and see what kind of dimension. Every matte, like traditional matte shadow that I've used from her still has a beautiful shine to it and it's really easy to blend. It's one of those formulas that just kind of glides on the lid and it's not a dusty matte, but it's also not like a super pigmented matte. I'm gonna grab the Sonia G Worker Pro. I'm gonna go into this shade right here and I'm gonna bring this here on the outer corner. I'm gonna take a clean brush and just kind of buff out the edges. Okay, now I'm gonna switch to the Smith 253 brush. Let's go into this really pretty pink shade right here. And let's place it on the lid. And I'm gonna grab this shade right here. And I'm gonna use the Makeup by Mario E5 brush and I'm gonna sweep that under the lash line. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the By Terry uh, Hydra Concealer and just kind of 
add a little bit right here. Now with this look, you could take it in different directions. Uh, you could go in with a brown eyeliner and kind of go right at the base of the lashes. This is from By Terry, by the way. And I have always enjoyed her eyeliners. They glide on so easily and they blend out super easily. They're not the best for the waterline. I've mentioned this before on my channel, but it seems like in my experience, eyeliners that smudge out really good and like quickly are not always the best for the waterline, but the eyeliners that are kind of hard to smudge, those are best for the waterline. But these are, I mean, these are instant pigment and you can go a long way with this. I have this one in the shade Brown Secret. So I wanna put on a shade on the inner corner. I'm gonna grab this shade right here and I'm using the Sigma Shader Crease Brush, the E47, and I'm gonna place that like right here on the center. And I think I might bring a little bit of that like right there on the center of the lid, just to add a little bit of that extra definition. Okay, so I am back. This is the final look for look number one, and this is a beautiful, beautiful eyeshadow look. So simple to create, and the textures are so soft. Creating this look reminded me of the results that I get when I use my Surat Beyond Beige palette. This is really beautiful and so easy to create. I mean, it did not take me long at all. Really, really enjoy this. So this is the final look for look number one. Let's go ahead and jump into look number two. Let's start with this shade, just like we did before. And I'm gonna bring this in the crease. to this shade. I'm just curious what this shade will look like on the outer corner. And I'm using the refer number 26 brush. I'm gonna bring that like right out here on the outer corner, kind of bringing it in as well. Also on the inner corner. I'm gonna leave that there for now and I'm gonna grab this shade with the E5 from Makeup Bar Mario. And I'm gonna place this like right here on the outer corner. So right here on the inner corner. I'll fix this outer corner once I put some color on the lower lash line. So we're gonna move on to the center of the lid. And I'm gonna go into this shade right here. So I just went ahead and put some concealer on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the lower lash line to kind of pull it together. So I'm gonna take my Refer 26 brush, I'm gonna go into this shade right here, and I'm gonna bring that here on the lower lash line. And then I'll kind of blend it into this so that it kind of breaks up that line a little bit. I don't want a sharp line. Um, I just don't have the eye shape for it. I wanna see what this shade looks like. So just to see what it looks like. I mean, I'm just curious. So I'm gonna grab the E5 from Makeup by Mario and let's bring that like right here. So that is a bright gold, y'all. I'm gonna go back into the middle shade and then just kind of blend those two shades together. So I'm gonna go into the eyeliner and go right here at the base of the lashes. And then I'll just blend it out with the flat brush and also on the lower lash line. So this is the final look for look number two. And 
my eyelash is kind of hanging on by a thread because I didn't want to like gob on a bunch of mascara and then have to work really hard to take it off because I am going to wipe this off for the third final look. Both of these eye looks are very similar. So this might be something that you might run into with this palette. The looks might look just very similar to each other. So kind of keep that in mind. Regardless of that, I do love the way that this eye look turned out. So that's it for look number two. Let's go ahead and jump into look number three, which will be the final look. Okay, so I went ahead and wiped off both of those eyeshadow looks. Kind of messed up my brows in the process, but that's okay. We're gonna move on to the third and final look with this palette. So I'm actually gonna start this look off using a brown eyeliner. So I'm gonna use the By Terry and I'm gonna put that like right at the base of the lashes. And then I'm gonna blend that out. I'm gonna take a smudge brush and kind of blend that out just a little bit more. Now I'm gonna take the Sonia G, this is the Soft Definer from the Lotus set. And I'm gonna go into this shade right here. And I'm gonna put this right in the crease and connect it to the eyeliner here on the outer corner. I'm also going to bring that right above that line right here. And just add just a tiny, tiny bit of definition because this is just kind of the base. I'm gonna go into this shade right here. So I'm gonna tip my head back and then look into my mirror and focus that right at the base of my crease. Next, I'm gonna grab my Smith 253 and I'm gonna grab this shade right here. So it's not super shimmery, but it is very pretty. I'm gonna go back to my smudge brush, the 204 from BK Beauty, and I'm gonna go into the shade right here. And I'm just gonna define this outer corner and kind of adding some depth where I wanna add it and where I need it. And then I think I'm gonna go back into the pencil and go back in and add some more depth and then I'll take a brush and kind of blend it out. So I went ahead and added some concealer. Now I kind of want to pull everything together. I'm going to start with the pencil here on the lower lash line and I'm going to focus that right there on the outer corner. Then I'm going to take the flat brush and blend that out. I'm going to take this Sigma Shader Crease Brush, the E47, and I'm going to go into this shade. And I want to try to put this on the lower lash line, like right here. I don't know if it's going to show up, but I want to try it. Now I'm going to take the refer number 26, and I'm going to go into this shade right here. And I'm going to kind of connect these together but not bringing that shadow too far in because I want that lightness right at the front of the eye. Now I'm gonna take the flat definer from Sonia G and I'm gonna go into this shade right here. I'm gonna place it right here on the center because this provides a nice like pop right there where the light hits the center of the eye. And I'm also going to put that on the inner corner as well. And I'm also going to put that on as the brow bone highlight. So this is the final look for look number three. And I went ahead and finished the rest of my makeup. And the lippy doesn't really match my shirt. But, oh, I wanted these tones to kind of bring out the tones in the eye look. So 
I grabbed the Victoria Beckham lip liner in shade number four. Then I grabbed the Posh lipstick from Victoria Beckham in the shade Pout. And these two permanently reside in my purse because they're just like those perfect tones for anything, for anything you're wearing. And I just love this eye look. I think this eye look is so so beautiful and I have a lot to say about this palette good and bad there are some negatives that I have found which I will get into those in my final thoughts but for now we're gonna go ahead and jump into the swatches and comparisons and I'm gonna swatch this palette and also compare it to other palettes that I find that might be similar and then we will jump into my final thoughts so I will see you guys then Okay, so now that we've made it through the swatches and comparisons, let me go ahead and get into my final thoughts about this palette. First thing I gotta talk about is there are some similar shades in this palette. As I was swatching it, I noticed that these two don't really look that similar down in the pan, but when you swatch them, they're similar. They're very similar in shade. The only difference is this has like a yellow base and this is more of a pink base, but they are very similar. I would say this is definitely stronger, meaning this shade right here. It's much stronger, much more um, like a, a stronger, like foiled metallic shade. This palette is really pretty. I really enjoyed using this palette. I think the downside to this palette is this is a very normal color story as you saw in the swatches and comparisons. We have a lot of palettes with this similar color story. There are some similar shades in this palette and the new one. For example, like this shade right here is very similar to these two shades here. And then for example, like this shade right up here definitely looks very similar to this shade right here. As you saw in the swatches, there are similar shades. And this shade right here in the middle is pretty much the exact same shade as this. It's almost like it's her signature shade for her palettes. I don't know, but I'm just assuming. So there is some similarities. So if you have this palette, I would probably pass on this one. Unless you just don't use the red and peaks in this one and maybe you're looking for more shimmers because this one definitely provides more shimmers than this one does. The other negative that I have found with this palette is that because the shades are of a similar tone, all of the looks are going to be very similar. It's like look number one and look number two looked very similar. This one also looks kind of similar to sh to the other two looks. Even though this look is a little bit lighter, they're all gonna be very similar because the tones are kind of the same in the palette. So kind of keep that in mind. Now the positives I find in the By Terry formula overall is just the overall quality. They're beautiful. And if you are someone that likes to bring sh shimmer shadows in the crease, you will love her formula because they're somewhat similar to like a Charlotte Tilbury. Funny enough, I think these are actually even better in the crease than Charlotte Tilbury's because of the finish of these and they don't emphasize wrinkles and textures. So definitely mature skin friendly. This palette doesn't have anything that's like super strong for the eye. So it doesn't have those super 
shimmery, metallic-y type of shades where they're just really explosive. These are beautiful, but they're much softer on the eye than some of the other pigments that we're used to from like Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona. I mean, those are just some strong, strong pigments. These are definitely a little bit more toned down and a little bit more everyday uh, user-friendly. But overall, I really like this palette and I am happy to have it in my collection, but I feel like there are some downsides to it. So if you have the other palette, you probably don't need this one. Uh, if you have the other palettes that I swatched and compared to this one, you probably won't need this one. It just kind of depends on what you're looking for. If you really love these bronzy tones, you will love this palette. If you're somebody that loves bronzy tones, you love a very easy, buildable, buttery formula, and you like to put shimmers in the crease and not have it emphasize any wrinkles or textures or anything like that in the crease, you will love this palette. But I think you have to decide, is it something I absolutely need? Probably not, especially if you have the other palettes that I mentioned. I'm happy to have it because I do really enjoy her eyeshadows. So that's it. Those are my overall thoughts. Sound off down below in the comment section. Have any of you picked this new palette up from By Terry? If you have, share with us in the comment section down below your experience, especially if your experience differs from mine, because like I've always said, your feedback and your experience is just as important as anyone else coming on behind a camera and sharing that. So definitely sound off down below in the comment section. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you. Bye.